All right, man. This is going to be quick, man, but I want to talk to y'all about the Meek Mill situation he going through with that little goof ass, crazy Mexican kid. Um, fuck his name is. Takashi Six Rat. What's up? And lights make a nigga beam like a motherfucker looking official as a fuck. Yo, uh, the situation with that is crazy. It's like, what should Meek Mill do? Should he swing on a little nigga? Should he go crazy and wild out? All of us know he's supposed to keep his motherfucking composure because a rap motherfucker is going to get you locked back up if you ever play with him. A whole nigga is going to be a whole nigga. You're not going to be able to change that. The fact of the matter is that everybody know Meek Mill represent the streets. He a kid from the streets. And he grew up a street kid. He ain't no fucking rat. He ain't going to tell nobody. So putting himself in harm's way is stupid. Because as soon as he get popped off and got to go sit down for a minute, Everybody gonna be looking at him like, man, you dumb as fuck, boy. You should have thought through that. So anybody that's trying to pipe it up and make it seem like he should have did something against that kid after that little goof ass run in, that's dumb. That's just dumb. What should really happen is that motherfuckers should have composure with themselves and be able to effectively be in a crowd or a room with people who you don't fuck with. Because without being able to do that, then you basically saying you weak and you're a whole nigga. You still got to be around the enemy and you got to know how to hold yourself down. Because if it came down to it, will you act accordingly at that appropriate moment? Every moment ain't the time to act the fuck out. Every moment ain't the situation to show yourself and put yourself in a, in a situation where people got cameras. They're going to put you like this boy been fighting probation for 10, 12 years dealing with goofy ass white people and their goofy ass laws. So why put yourself in a situation like that where somebody is automatically... Working for the government, go hire your motherfucking ass dealing with them on some criminal ass shit when you could have just kept it moving. Obviously, it looked like a setup. How the fuck, old boy, even anywhere where Meek Mill is. But that's something that's beyond the pale, too, because if he act accordingly and jump bad, it's going to be on him. So it's easy to trap black dudes because the whole system is set up to fuck us. That's why a Mexican kid can make sure 10, 12 niggas go to prison and he free because the system already set up to trap us and pop us off so they can they can slide through. You know what I'm saying? Because the system is set up to keep them. They immigrants. They call them immigrants. They got all kind of words and reasons why those kids don't go to jail for the same shit that they put niggas in jail for. And you see what happened in the Capitol building when it turned out and white folks do a crime. They ain't even looked upon as criminal activity. So you see how the game is, man. So, man, if that didn't teach you nothing at the Meek Mill situation, man, know when to hold them and know when to fold them. Know when to walk away, know when to run. My man had us listen to that song by Kenny Rogers when I was a little ass kid. And he used to break it down to us because I had a father growing up. And he used to break that shit down to us about what is the importance about knowing when to hold them, knowing when to fold them, knowing when to walk away, knowing when to run. That's before you little niggas era. And that was in the 80s. So the point I'm making is that if you ain't putting this kind of thought pattern in your life about everything, not just beef with some motherfucking body, it could be if you could get in a car crash with somebody. And if you ain't using them four points about how to get your ass through this mess, this, mess, this bullshit, you're going to be a casualty. And everybody you go around going to be your ass dumb. You should have been thinking, nigga, what the fuck's wrong with you? And ain't nothing you're going to be able to say about it. So you got to be using that brain, man. Motherfuckers ain't your friend. Your homies will cap you up and be like, yeah, nigga, hell yeah, go crazy out here. And then be stepping back like. But we could do that. You got a name out here. You got to be watching yourself. They be telling you advice after they done fucked up your motherfucker whole scenario. So you got to be able to decipher situations. I see Mike sign coming at old boy. Uh, what's dude's name? Wack 100, because Wack 100 tried to drive records at Meek Mill, calling him out for not going crazy on the, um, the little rat. So it's like... Maybe Wack 100 got a, a point. Oh, man, you a street nigga. You supposed to do this. You, supposed to, you got your people with you. Nigga, you supposed to get it in. Well... One thing is for facts is that Mac 100 from California, it might not be the same mindset as somebody from Philly. You understand what I'm saying? They got a lot more immigrants up there, a lot more people that Spanish, a lot more people that's different cultures and 
Philly is mostly black and white. You know what I'm saying? So, and while it might be different cultures, it's not just on a larger scale like it is like that. So, you go to California, it's every other race out there right up, right up in your face. You know what I'm saying? So, like I said, it might be a different mindset, but I don't agree with him saying he's supposed to pop off like that. You got to sit back. And it's times and places to handle your business. And if old boy wanted to really jump in, like if the little Mexican guy was really serious, he would have made sure right at that moment that they had set up a moment and been like, look, we finna go handle this nigga two blocks down the street around the corner. How you said that about me ain't right. It would have got fixed because that's just the way the streets in the world work. It wouldn't have just been some videos that went out. The fact that it was just videos that went out promoting to show you that it was TV. It's not... That wasn't danger. That wasn't no situation to be responding to in a moment where you can hurt somebody, especially after somebody got 10, 15 people locked up. How many brothers went down with that situation? That's scary because he's letting you know, like anybody come in contact with me, whether you be friend or foe, it could be your last day. It could be your last motherfucking moment. So you got to kind of check yourself if you can. If you can't, you can't. If you high head and if you pop off the way you pop off, that's what it is. It don't matter if a motherfucker agree with you or not. Nigga, it went down, it went down. That still get respect. It's, it's not no disrespect in it. It's just that it is that the proper moment to do something like that. It's up to you to decide that. That's this thing we call life. Nobody could tell you when it's time for you to operate and activate. But, you know, sometimes when you think back after some shit after it didn't happen, is when you get a chance to be like, damn, I should have thought that shit. And that come with maturity. And I think that Meek Mill sitting down having to deal with the cops and the police and a fucked up judge and dealing with the rigmarole of court papers and court situations. I think that caught him like, you know what? It's easier to get caught up in some shit than it is to get out some shit. So I think that that helped him think through that. And I think that was a smart move because, again, if you fuck up, you fucked up. And then everybody with an opinion is going to be sitting back like, damn. And he been in jail. He know. He know for a fact. When you get your ass to the jail, it don't matter what the fuck you tell niggas. They're going to be like, you dumb as hell, man. Bro, you had a chance, man. Look at you, nigga. You sitting on top of the world, man. You moving wrong. You got the wrong people around you. It's nothing you can say. You can't say, man, then he did it. And I had to fuck off, fire his ass up. You should see that nigga face. Ain't nobody want to hear that shit. You tricked yourself off the street. You tricked yourself out of position. Why? Because you let your emotions control you. Because you let people outside of you and they issues get inside you and all of a sudden you gotta respond. That just forms a young life, young mind. The minute you gonna be like, oh, okay, I got shit to do. I got things I gotta accomplish. For motherfucker want me to handle that. It's nothing to do. We can come, you can't handle that. When the fuck did handling that stop happening? That shit going on right now somewhere in the motherfucking country, in the world. If things go bad, things happen and people handle that. So it ain't no fakeness, it ain't no bullshit. Watch yourself. Don't let nobody trick you off the streets. Don't let nobody trick you out your position. You got one life. You got one chance. You got one opportunity. It can easily go away. It can go away without letting somebody fuck you over and trick you off the game. So stay on your ground out there, man. It's your boy Hood. I'm representing the films. It's my brand. It's what I do. Check out my new movie. It's a killer rapper. It's right here. It's free on my channel. My new book, How to Make a Hood Movie, is right in the description. You can get that. Probably had a written a movie in the comment section. I just made a little movie. Y'all can check it out. It's dope. Hip-hop, reparations, all that good shit. And check out my new videos. And I'll holler at y'all soon, man. Thanks for listening.